prayers. Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of humanity, we beseech you to look upon with your abundant favor these your servants whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trusts in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to their church. Item 3 on the order paper proclamation by the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament of Uganda. It's the Statue Instrument number 70 of 2020. Proclamation of Parliament by the Honorable Speaker, Parliament of the Republic of Uganda. Whereas the President of the Republic of Uganda has indicated to the Speaker his wish to address Parliament and the nation on the national budget for the financial 2020-2021 under Article 1012 of the Constitution of, of Republic of Uganda and Rule 10.4a of the Rules of Procedure of the Parliament of Uganda. Cognizant of the fact that financial year 2019-2020 will end on the 30th day of June 2020, aware that it is expedient that the President addresses Parliament and the nation or the national budget for the financial 2020 2021. Now, therefore, in exercise of the powers conferred upon the Speaker by Clause 2 of Article 95 of the Constitution, I hereby proclaim that Parliament shall sit at Parliament buildings on the 11th day of June 2020 at 1400 hours to receive the presidential address on the national budget for the financial 2020 2021, given under my hand at Parliament House, Kampala. 26th day of May 2020. Rebecca Kadaga, Speaker of the Parliament. Item 4 on the order paper communication from the Chair. Honour members, I have uh, three pieces of communication. The first one is that uh, on the 1st of June 2020, His Excellency the President wrote to me returning to the Excise Duty Amendment Act 2020 and the Income Tax Amendment Act 2020, reconsider clause two, which sought to amend section four of the Income Tax Act. Clause 3D, we sought to introduce a new subsection 3A, section five of the Income Tax Act on rental income for multiple buildings. We also returned clause 3B and clause seven AI of the Income Tax Amendment Bill on deductible incomes for purposes of determining tax on rental income for any person. In regard to the excise duty amendment bill, he has resubmitted clause 2B, 2C, 2D, 2F, 2G, 2I, and 2K. They will accordingly be referred to the Commission on Finance, Planning, and Economic Development for further perusal and report back. Honour members, We have, uh, we have, in the last few days, suffered some mishaps in the region, namely the death of President uh, Pierre Nkunziza of Burundi, followed by the death of the Ambassador Onyanga Par, our Ambassador at the Permanent Mission in Geneva, and then the death of General Katsile uh, which also took place during uh, this period. On our members who remember that uh, President Kurunziza was our guest speaker at the 8th National Prayer Breakfast on the 8th October 2006 at Sheraton Hotel. On that occasion, the late president talked of a prophecy for his presidency and his work with Jesus. He said he was wounded in battle after God's message that would be head of state. He shared how God was him, with him after he was abandoned for dead by his fighters 
and spent four months in a river, but came out to be president of the Republic of Burundi. President Kuruziza became the president of the National Council for De Defense of Democracy, otherwise known as the CNDD, on 20th August 2000, and presided over the movement as it moved towards political compromise with the government. He was later re-elected president of the CNDD, FDD, which is now a political party, in August 2004, and became the candidate for in the forthcoming legislative and presidential elections. Uh, he came to victory with his party, with the large majority of the popular vote. We convey our condolences, not only to the people of Burundi, but the summit of the heads of state of the East African community, as he was our president within the community. And our members, Ambassador Christopher Onyang Apa has been our ambassador in Geneva uh, from 1996-2001. Ambassador Apa was ambassador of the Russian Federation and the 15 Commonwealth of Independent States of the former Soviet Union. In 2003, he was appointed ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany, Austria, and the Vatican, resident in Berlin. From there, 2010, Ambassador Onyango was High Commissioner to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the ECOWAS states. The country has lost a uh, diplomat and great administrator whom many uh, would like to emulate. We also note the passing of General Katile Gwanga, an army officer of the Uganda Post Defense Forces, who served the nation since 1972. He died at the beginning of this week. He was uh, an interesting person, an environmentalist, and a lover of dogs and his gun. The late general once said that, uh, I like dogs to guard me because they can never betray me like people. I don't even trust my bodyguards more than my dogs. That general had dreams of writing a book about his personal life, but he, he died before it could come true. So, honor members, I want us to rise and uh, observe a moment of silence in honor of these three dignitaries. their souls rest in eternal peace. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Excellency the Vice President, Right Honor General Ali, Acting Prime Minister and Leader of Government Business, Honor Ministers, the Leader of Opposition in Parliament, Honor Ministers of State, you know the Diplomatic Corps, Honourable Members of Parliament, Head of the Public Service and Secretary of the Cabinet, the Chief of the Defence Forces, Inspector General of Police, Commissioner General of Prisons, Governor Bank of Uganda, ladies and gent gentlemen, we welcome you to this budget uh, presentation. I want to thank the President and the Minister of Finance for the work they have done to enable us to, to have this, this budget. Uh, you may recall that last week on Thursday, we convened for the opening of the fifth session of Parliament, and this is the, the President delivered the State of the Nation address. Today is a very important day in the Parliament calendar, and I welcome all of you to listen to the uh, presentation of the approved budget for this financial year. At the global scene, the economic outlook of many nations is bleak, and some of the giant economies are in recession. Uganda's position is equally hard, as we have been afflicted by not only the COVID-19 pandemic, floods, locusts, and other, other disasters. For the economy to be resuscitated, therefore, calls for deliberate, elaborate fiscal and monetary policies, coupled with change of work style through digital transformation. In fulfillment of Article 155.1 of the Constitution, President calls to be prepared and laid before Parliament the proposed annual budget for financial 2021. This was done on its behalf by the Minister of Finance on the 23rd and 24th of April uh, 2020. Thereafter, the annual budget was committed in accordance with Section 13 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and the Rules of Procedure to the Committee on Budget and to each sector committee that part which of the annual budget which falls within their jurisdiction. 
significant to note is that the budget preparation did not factor in some of the challenges and effects that may arise due to COVID-19, and technically it means that this budget may require realignment. Parliament received a proposal of that budget and considered the National Development Plan, Charter of Fiscal Responsibility, National Budget Framework Paper. I want to thank very much the committees of the House and the noble members for performing their constitutional obligation in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic and despite not in being classified as an essential service. Indeed, many members had incidents where their cars and themselves were impounded for not having stickers but members who stood until the work was done. Thank you. The Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development has complied with the provisions of Constitution, the Public Finance Management Act, and your behalf, I will request the, uh, the Minister to present to Parliament the, the budget and, the, and the nation the highlight of the approved budget for financial year 2020-2021. Later, we shall have an opportunity through our committees to carry out oversight and make an assessment whether the intentions and projections outlined in the annual budget have been met or not. I believe that all members and the nation anxiously waiting to hear what the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development is presenting to the country. Let me therefore invite the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to present the budget. Honourable Minister, invite you. Item 5 on the order paper. Presentation of the budget speech by the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development on, on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda. Madam Speaker, can I lower this so that I can be heard for five minutes? <laughs> can yes. I? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Your Excellency, the Vice President, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker, his Lordship the Chief Justice, His Lordship the Deputy Chief Justice, the Right Honourable Prime Minister and Lead of Government Business, Right Honourable Deputy Prime Ministers, Madam Leader of the Opposition, Honourable Ministers and Members of Parliament, Members of the Blood Corps, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. In accordance to Article 155 part 1 of our constitution and section 13 part 13 of the public finance management act 2015 the revenue and expenditure estimates for the financial year 2021 were approved by parliament on the 24th of april this year this statement, therefore, summarizes the economic policy underlying the budget estimates. It is with pleasure that I deliver this speech on behalf of His Excellency, the President of Uganda. Madam Speaker, today we face unprecedented times. The global coronavirus pandemic has, without exception, impacted the lives and economic activity across the world. The pandemic has worsened the effects of climate change and the local situation that Uganda and the region had already been grappling with. Uganda has been reasonably successful in dealing with these emergencies. Allow me to commend His Excellency the President for his visionary leadership in the fight against these natural disasters and emergencies. 
Madam Speaker, these emergencies have adversely impacted on our economy. The livelihoods of many Ugandans have been negatively affected with the declining household incomes and in some cases the loss of jobs and food insecurity. Economic activity has drastically declined with the reduced demand for agricultural produce, the disruption of input supplies to manufacturers, as well as disruption of micro, small, and medium enterprises activities. Inflows of foreign direct investment and remittances of Ugandans in the diaspora have also declined. Madam Speaker, the, crisis we the crises we have recently faced cannot, however, distract us from our long-term development strategy. These emergencies indeed present several lessons and opportunities that we have drawn on, the, on, on, on to craft the economic stimulus and growth strategy, which I will elaborate today. These opportunities include the following. One, the acceleration of our import substitution and export promotion strategy for a range of goods including medicines and other health products. The products of agro-industrialization and light manufacturers which Uganda can produce with a comparative advantage. Two, digitalization of many aspects of socioeconomic activity to improve efficiency and reduce costs. These can be applied through e-commerce, e-government, including teleconferencing, procurement, and the dispensation of justice, e-learning, robotic aut automation, artificial intelligence, cyber security, and cloud computing, and digital marketing in tourism. This permits a fast to fast track implementation of the fourth industrial revolution. Two, strengthening the contingency planning to mitigate the impact of disasters and protect the most vulnerable persons. Four, transforming informality into doing business to being formal. Five, reform of urban transport to reduce congestion, starting with the greater Kampala metropolitan area and eventually regional cities. Six, domestic tourism stim stimulation to encourage many Ugandan residents to explore our local touristic destinations when income can allow. Madam Speaker, we shall therefore seize these opportunities and continue on our path to developing an integrated, self-sustaining economy as laid out in the NRM 10-point program. Uganda will also actively promote the development of African and the global markets to enable access by Uganda entrepreneurs. The NRM government shall therefore proactively add value to the range of agricultural products and minerals that Uganda is endowed with as guided by His Excellency the President in the State of the Nation Address. We shall build a strong and a durable economy addressing the eight fundamental human needs, namely food, clothing, shelter, defense, human resource development, that is health and education, infrastructure, electricity, roads, rail, ICT, telecoms, and spirituality. This will establish a firm basis for service industries such as the tourism, hospitality, that is hotels, bars, nightclubs, casinos, etc., as well as entertainment, concerts, sports, etc., to flourish. Madam Speaker and colleagues, the budget has therefore been based on the following theme, stimulating the economy to safeguard livelihoods, jobs, businesses, and industrial recovery. Madam Speaker, in my statement today, I will therefore do the following. One, take stock of, the, of progress in economic and social transformation that form the foundation for Uganda's resilience in the face of emergencies we have faced and will continue facing. Two, present the economic stimulus and growth strategy. And three, present the financing framework underpinning the economic stimulus and growth strategy. Now, progress in economic and social transformation. Madam Speaker and colleagues, the NRM government has taken great strides to establish a strong foundation for economic and social transformation over the last five years, 
during the implementation of the second national development plan, that is NDP2. The strong foundation we see today has built the resilience we can see in the face of emergency that we have recently faced. I will highlight some of the achievements we have registered in this regard before spelling out the economic stimulus and growth strategy. The national output. Madam Speaker, the Uganda economy has continued to grow despite the effects of the recent emergencies we have faced. Uganda's GDP in the year 2019-20 is estimated to amount to shillings 138 trillion. The economy is estimated to grow at 3.1% this financial year ending 30th June 2020, slower than the average growth rate of 5.4% in the previous four years. Had it not been the emergencies we have faced in the last six months, the rate of economic growth would have been at least 60% per annum. The agricultural sector grew by 4.2% up from 3.8% in the previous four years. However, industry grew by only 2.3% compared to an annual average of 7% in the previous four years. Services grew by 3.6% over the year compared to the annual average of 5.6% in the previous four years. These statistics demonstrate the effect of the recent emergencies that the country has faced. Despite the temporary shocks, the medium-term outlook of the economic growth is positive and will be stronger given the measures we intend to implement. Primary production, Madam Speaker, substantial progress has been made in primary production. The agricultural sector plays a central role in Uganda's economy, as we all know. It accounts for 45% of exports and employs 64% of all Ugandans and 72% of all youth. Thus, its importance in influencing household incomes. Primary production of commodities has increased significantly. Coffee production increased from 5.7 million 60 kg bags to 7 million bags between 2017 and 2019. Fish catches have grown from 391,000 metric tons to 561,000 metric tons between 2017 and 2019. This was largely as a result of the strict enforcement of fisheries regulations addressing challenges of poor quality fingerings and limited access to feeds. A total of 13,800 acres of sugar cane have also been established at Atiaka Sugar Factory in northern Uganda, and more is planned when the Amuru project starts. Human capital development, Madam Speaker, the well-being of Ugandans has also improved significantly over the years. For instance, the literacy rate of Ugandans in 2018 increased to 74% of all adults compared to 72% in 2014. Maternal mortality have reduced to 336 per 100,000 births from 438 per 100,000 births in 2011. And under five children, mortality has reduced to 64 per, to 64 per 1,000 births from 137 per 100 births in 2011. Access to safe water in rural areas today is at 69%, increasing from 65% in 2015. With 38,500 villages, representing 66% of total 58 villages in the country, have been provided with clean water. Access to safe water in urban areas stands at 79%, compared to 77% in 2015, with the piped water main network increasing nature is beginning to talk access to safe water in urban areas stands at 79% compared to 77% in 2015, 
with the piped water main network increasing from 17,600 kilometers to 20,200 kilometers. Over 60,000 new customers were connected during the year, bringing the total number of connections to over 720,000. Rural sanitation coverage is at 79%, while sanitation in urban areas increased to 87%. Economic infrastructure. Power. Madam Speaker, we continue to make long strides in developing economic infrastructure. We stress this. Electricity generation capacity now stands at 1,254 megawatts with the completion of the 42 megawatt Agago Achua second, the 76 megawatt Kiambura, and the 5.9 megawatt Ndugutu power projects. The 183 megawatt Isimba power project and its transmission lines were commissioned and the 600 megawatt Karuma power start project is is 98% complete and is due for commission in November this year. The Karuma Kawanda transmission line is also 82% complete. Construction of Nyagaka 3 power project also resumed in May 2019. The electrification of industrial parks has also progressed with the commissioning of the Mukono and the Igang Industrial Park substation. Under the Rural Electrification Program, 14,820 kilometers of medium voltage power line and 10,208 kilometers of low voltage uh, distribution power lines have been constructed. Have been constructed. Since we launched the free electricity connection policy in November 2018. 277,500 rural households have been connected
course, um, we are sorry about that interruption in our broadcast uh, tonight um, uh, when we are following the budget year for 2020-2021. Uh, uh, as uh, you just heard uh, the minister there, Honorable Matia Kasaija, who was taking us through uh, the budget for 2020-2021. And uh, we, um, we just apologize for uh, the break in our uh, broadcast or the transmission because um, over uh, um, uh, what is actually happening. Now, it's not just a problem here, but the problem is happening everywhere. And, and remember, um, it is just raining very heavily out there and um, uh, uh, signals are getting interrupted. Uh, that, of course, will not stop um, uh, uh, us from broadcasting. And you heard from the minister himself, they're saying, uh, yes, there is noise. And uh, what do you have to do? Because um, he has a mandate to read to us the national budget. And he had decided on the budget there. And of course, um, what he was doing was giving us the background uh, to um, all the things before are presenting to us uh, the next proposals of government. It's just uh, prudent that um, uh, the minister takes us through uh, what government has managed to achieve from uh, the last year when um, we passed that budget. I uh, saw so, uh, going through the budget, what happened, what the priorities were, uh, what has been achieved, um, what has been done uh, before again presenting uh, to the nation um, uh, a new uh, proposals of uh, the 45 uh, trillion shillings that we're talking about here um, just a while ago. You had us, uh, or you saw us here with uh, Honorable um, Amos Lugolobi. Amos Lugolobi, uh, the chairperson of the, the budget committee, uh, the, the, the committee on budget in parliament, uh, was talking to us about that whole process. And of course, now what is real is uh, the budget of uh, 45 trillion, which the minister is reading to us. But uh, we are very optimistic that. Um, uh, this budget, of course, will have a review. We'll look into it because um, it is a budget that we're reading amidst the pandemic. Um, uh, and, of course, uh, you can also uh, be able to see what is actually happening just right there. Now, normally, uh, that is uh, a rain problem. You can uh, tell that uh, um, what normally happens is uh, this meeting is convened. Um, uh, it is normally convened at the International Conference Center, where all of us uh, normally go to be a part of that. But because of uh, COVID-19, which in and demands and um, calls for social distancing. That's why Parliament actually had to relocate uh, to the things where they were. And of course, now another natural calamity there uh, befalls Parliament, as uh, you've just seen. Uh, when the minister uh, was starting to speak to us, of course, he talked about the rains that are rocking the country uh, in different places. We've seen that um, in uh, Kenya and everywhere. But I think we can now take you back to uh, Parliament, uh, where um, uh, now come has been restored. Let's get back to the minister uh, to again be part of this budget. Welcome to Parliament again. Sorry for that um, uh, break um, in the transmission. Welcome. In November 2018, 200,000 277,500 rural households have been connected with a target to connect 300,000 rural households annually. Transport. Madam Speaker, Transport infrastructure has improved considerably with the stock of paved national road network today totaling 5,600 kilometers, increasing from 4,300 kilometers in 2015. The meter-gauge railway network is under rehabilitation. The railway currently facilitates transportation of 18,000 tons of cargo monthly and 2,000 passengers daily in order to support the congestion in Greater Kampala. In the air transport sector, 13 aerodromes have been rehabilitated countrywide and the expansion of the Entebbe International and the construction of the Kabar International Airport are progressing as scheduled. Uganda Airlines is revived and we began operation during the month of August 2019. Information and communication technology Madam Speaker, ICT services have also performed well over that period. Internet users have increased from 7.5 million in 2016 to 11 million in March 2020. Total telephony subscriptions, of which mobile connections constitute 60 percent, increased from 21 million in 2016 to 28 million in January this year. The value of mobile money transactions increased from 3.4 trillion in 2016 to 7.2 trillion in March 2020. The national backbone infrastructure now covers 49 districts, 48, 
480 ministries, agencies, and local governments, and seven border posts. The monthly coverage unit cost of internet broad, broad, bandwidth for one megabyte per second on the backbone has reduced from $300 to $70. Uh, the 500 seat ICT innovation hub at Nakawa was also completed during the year. Furthermore, 122 ICT innovators were supported under the National ICT Initiative Program to develop e-solutions. Some of their software applications have been used for business continuity during the coronavirus lockdown. Posta Uganda launched community information centers in Kitgum, Kasese, Moroto, and Mubembe to enhance provision of information on government services and programs. Posta Uganda also successfully implemented the international postal system at 48 district post offices, enabling improvement in international and national operational efficiency in timely exchange of posts science, technology, and innovation. Madam Speaker, in the science, technology, and innovation sector, core projects have two, have, have two progress well. For example, the Machining, Manufacturing, and Industrial Skills Training Center at Namave was commissioned in January 2020. The center will provide industrial skills training and apprenticeship and manufacture high quality precision machine parts and accessories. Madam Speaker, the first phase of the construction of the Kira Vico plant at Jinja Industrial Park is 50% complete, and the two Kayora electric buses have since been developed, and I have traveled in one of them. Assembled and tested under a testimony transfer project with the China High Tech Corporation. I speak what I have said and done. Governance. Madam Speaker, to improve urban security, phase one of the Safe City CCTV project has been rolled out in Kampala Metropolitan, Wakiso Mukono, and Entebbe. Crime surveillance has also been enhanced with the deployment of LDUs across the country. UP, UPF, Uganda Police Force, also conducted electronic profiling of guns which will help to curb gun-related crime. Consequently, crime levels reduced by 9.8% from, from 238, 746 cases reported in 2018 to now 215,204 cases in, 19, uh, in 2019. Madam Speaker, to increase access to justice, we have established a one-stop justice law and the order sector centers, each consisting of a court and a police services, the director of public prosecution, prison reception centers, probation and community services in 64 districts across the country. In addition, pre bargaining was instituted to the congest court and improve the court efficiency. Consequently, cases aged over three years old have reduced from 24% in 2017 to 17% in 2019. Madam Speaker, to improve public service delivery, systems across government have been developed and integrated as follows. One, the e-visa works permit system and the integrated border management system is now operational at 11 border posts and was extended to 17 Uganda missions abroad that can issue visas to intending visitors. Consequently, average monthly visa applications have increased from 4,500 4, applications in 2016 to 12,700 applications in 2019. Electronic passports have been integrated with National Identification and Registration Agency registering leading a reduction in a passport issuance from 10 working days in 2016 to 4 working days today. Business registration now takes 4 hours and service 
Uganda centers have been established at 18 zone offices to eliminate bureaucracy and reduce cost of doing business. Madam Speaker, the fundamental progress in the social economic transformation of Uganda that I have highlighted in a, is the result of the NRM government's holistic development strategy. This social economic progress provides an underlying resilience to Uganda's economy, which has enabled us to withstand the temporary disruptions of the coronavirus pandemic, the locust invasion, and the effects of climate change. Economic stimulus and growth strategy. Madam Speaker, the economic stimulus and growth strategy, strategy that the NRM government will implement commencing the next financial year and in the medium term is aimed at achieving the following three key objectives. One, improving the well-being of Ugandans. Two, boosting economic transformation. And three, improving peace, security, and good governance. Madam Speaker, these objectives address the three most critical aspects of Uganda's society, namely the welfare, the people's welfare, the viability of farms and businesses, and the social economic ecosystem in which they exist, and is a major determinant of their future prospects. I will now detail interventions in each of them in turn. Improving well-being of Ugandans. Madam Speaker, in the pursuit of improving the well-being of Ugandans, government has identified interventions that address their welfare, namely, one, food security and good nutrition, two, enhanced health care provision, three, ensuring universal access to water and sanitation, four, increasing social protection for the most vulnerable population, and five, transforming education delivery. I will now detail the specific measures to be implemented in each area. Food security and good nutrition. Madam Speaker, the coronavirus pandemic has brought to the fore the need to ensure adequate, adequate food, security and nutrition. Food security and adequate nutrition is of paramount importance for healthy and productive life and is a major factor in health care as it reduces the burden of preventable diseases and malnutrition. It also contributes significantly to reduce maternal, neonatal, and child death. Uganda is blessed with adequate rainfall and arable land, which Uganda is blessed with adequate rainfall, as we can witness now, and arable land, which provide the necessary conditions for agricultural production, advanced climatic conditions notwithstanding, as it has disrupted us here. The 14 products that have been identified by His Excellency the President will therefore be developed commercially. These products are maize, cassava, banana, beans, Irish potato, sweet potato, millet, sugar, cane, cattle, beef, and dairy, coffee, tea, cocoa, and fish. To reduce post harvest losses, the, construct the construction of storage facilities of 42,000 metric tons capacity that commence in Iganga, Isingiro, Amuru, Kalungu, and Nebi will continue. Madam Speaker, in order to improve nutrition, government will aggressively implement programs to ensure adequate sensitization and awareness of all Ugandans on the, benef uh, the benefits out of good nutrition for their health and well-being. Well -being. I would like to encourage all Ugandans to embrace healthy living through nutrition, wellness, and active living. All Ugandans should place due emphasis on physical and mental activity by exercising regularly and making healthy choices of food and by reading and writing. Enhanced health, enhanced health care provision. Madam Speaker, in order to promote health for all Ugandans, government will set a health system. In this regard, health spending has been increased to ensure the recruitment of additional health workers and also provide for their welfare. In order to deal with the coronavirus pandemic, 
and other similar epidemics that may occur in the future. Government has prioritized the purchase of personal protective equipment uh, and an addition, an additional funding had been pro, has, be, had, has been provided to increase intensive care beds at national and referral hospitals. Funding has also been availed to procure coronavirus test kits and other materials in order to curb the spread of the virus and ensure readiness for possible cover, second wave of infection if they should occur. Government will enhance surveillance and desensitization of management of the coronavirus in the country. Government will also support scientific research and innovation, especially in vaccine development. And we are very advanced on this vaccine, vaccination development against coronavirus. Madam Speaker, further measures to strengthen the health systems include the following. One, undertake mass sensitization and awareness on immunization, the use of mosquito nets to prevent malaria, HIV AIDS prevention, and the prevention and the management of non-communicable diseases. Two, develop centers of excellence for delivery of specialized medical care by completing the construction of the Uganda Heart Institute in, 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 in Morago, establish centers for cancer treatment at regional federal hospitals, and commission the regional hospital for pediatric surgery at Entebbe, and fast track the construction of the international specialized hospitals of refugees at Oromoa to, to stop medical tourism. Three, strengthen the supply chain for medicine and the medical supplies to improve the availability of medicines and ensure accountability thereof. Many of these medicines will be manufactured here in Uganda and ensure, uh, and, and, and ensure health centers three are functional with health workers, desk medical equipment, supplies, and medicines. The total number of functioning health center three is, is now 1,327 and 41 health centers two are being upgraded to health centers three in the coming financial year. Enhancing access to safe water and sanitation and utilities. Madam Speaker, in order to ensure universal access to safe and clean water and improved sanitation, we will consolidate and build on achievements I reported earlier on by undertaking the following interventions, details of which are in the background to the budget. One, construct nine graphic flow schemes 40 solar powered water supply systems and read 455 waterways. Two, construct 30 water supply and station systems. Develop bulk water transfer master plans and design for 15 water supply and, and sanitation systems. Three, construct 15 small scale solar power irrigation schemes and an additional 50 irrigation schemes in West Nile, Achori, Ankole, Lango, Central Uganda, sub-regions. Four, intensify monitoring <coughs> and forecasting of weather and water level, floods, and effectively disseminate information to guide policy actions by stakeholders. And five, enforce environmental protection regulations for settlements in lake shore, on lake shores, river banks, wetlands, forests, and flood prone areas. Colleagues, you know this is a real problem which we must, square, we must handle squarely by preventing people from uh, settling very close to the lake shores. You have seen what has happened in the recent, day, in the recent past and the river banks and wetlands and the forests and the flood prone areas. Providing emergency for social protection. Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker, Uganda's vulnerable population, including the elderly, require protection, more especially to address the aftermath of the recent emergencies. Government will therefore prioritize targeted support to the most vulnerable groups and those at higher risk of food insecurity, old age, and chronically ill. To this end, we will do one, 
continue to provide relief aid in response to the coronavirus crisis and natural disasters such as the locust invasion and the climate change crisis, that is floods and landslides. This will allow the rehabilitation of adversely affected schools, health units, water points, and other social infrastructure, and provide relief to the vulnerable household affected. An allocation of shillings, 45 billion, has been made toward this intervention for the time being. Two, roll out the social assistance grant for the elderly, that is the SAGE, national wide to persons aged 80 years and above, including the elderly aged 65 years in the piloted 15 districts. An allocation of 100, 170 billion has been provided for this intervention in the new financial year. Transforming education delivery. Madam Speaker, education plays a central role in the development of the human capital. In order to improve the effectiveness in the delivery of education, government will prioritize the following actions. One, roll out the new educational curriculum, including early childhood development curriculum. Two, expand access to vocational education and training, including international accreditation of business, technical, vocational education and training, BTV, institutions as centers of excellence. Three, improve the quality of tertiary education institutions by ensuring their adequate staffing and increasing the emphasis of academic research. Four, enhance teaching supervision using digital platforms in the inspection of schools through scaling up the integrated inspection system. And five, develop the provision of lessons through digital platforms such as TV, radios, and the internet to ensure continuous learning and implementation and implement the electronic delivery mode in validation and distribution of self-learning materials to learners, as it has been happening in the past, as you may be know, as you may know. Boosting economic transformation. Madam Speaker, in order to boost economic recovery and make progress with our economic transformation agenda, the economic stimulus and the growth strategy we will implement shall, one, restore household incomes and safeguard jobs and safeguard jobs, two, reignite business activity, three, provide tax relief to businesses, four, enhance economic infrastructure, and five, improve, gov improve good governance and maintain security law and order. The specific measures that government will implement are the following. One, restoring, restore, restoring household incomes and safeguarding jobs. Madam Speaker, following the immediate adverse impact on household incomes and the jobs of the emergencies we have recently faced, Interventions will be implemented to increase agricultural production to ensure national food security and expand regional food, sec food exports. This measure will, include, sorry, will also sustain the supply of inputs for agricultural processing. The restoration of demand for agricultural produce is the key to jumpstart this process. Safeguarding jobs and other non-farm incomes is also critical for the restoration of demand for agricultural products. These actions intimately ensure the recovery of aggregate demand for domestic products while boosting incomes for the majority of the households, both rural and urban. The specific actions that will be implemented in this regard are the following. One, enhance the provision of improved agricultural inputs using NADS e-voucher scheme to farmers and upscaling agricultural extension services to boost production of key agricultural commodities for which an allocation of 300 billion has been made. Two, create jobs for the vulnerable but also bo but able-bodied persons affected by coronavirus by expanding labor-intensive public works in the urban and peri-urban areas for which an allocation... Let me repeat this. Create jobs for vulnerable but able-bodied persons affected by coronavirus by expanding labor-intensive public works in the urban and peri-urban areas 
for which an allocation of shillings 130 billion has been made for the youth, please, special around Kampala. Three, provide rainwater harvesting technologies in rural communities, implementation of solar irrigation schemes, and investment in the construction of multi-purpose water reservoirs. Four, roll out regional and the community-based st storage facilities to store and increase the agricultural products and reduce the post-harvest losses. Five, provide seed capital to organize special interest groups under the Youth Fund, Women Entrepreneurship Fund, and the Mioga Talent Support Scheme, for which an allocation of 256 billion has been made. Reignition, reignating business activity. Madam Speaker, micro, small, and medium enterprises are the backbone of Uganda's economy, representing an estimated 85% of private sector companies in regard to employment. The vast majority are operated by households and have also been extremely vulnerable to the recent emergencies as they have low cash reserves and limited access to affordable investment finance. This also applies to other manufacturing firms that have been unduly affected by the coronavirus crisis. Restoring the economic activity, therefore, enhances the household's incomes, especially in the urban areas. Madam Speaker and colleagues, in order to improve the availability of investment finance and the cash flows of micro, small, and the minimum enterprise and other manufacturing firms, we will implement the following measures. One, provide credit through circles and microfinance institutions to support micro and small scale enterprises. I'm proposing an allocation of shillings 94 billion in the coming financial year. Two, increase access to credit at Uganda Development Bank to offer low interest financing to manufacturing, agribusiness, and other private sector firms for which shillings 1 million, 1 million 45 billion over the medium term has been, it, it has been planned and it will be soon maturing. Three, increase funding to Uganda Development Corporation for public private partnership investments to facilitate our import substitution and export promotion strategy, of which I have pro provided to start with 138 billion, but I want more there. Four, provide for banks to restructure loans to their borrowers who are facing liquidity constraints and provide additional liquidity on a case-by-case -case basis as recently guided by the Bank of Uganda. Five, reduce charges on mobile banking and mobile money transactions to improve efficiency, reduce uh, reduce person-to-person uh, -person contact to prevent spread of the coronavirus, and finally, expedite the payment of arrears owed by government to private sector firms commencing July this year, for which I have provided 673 billion in order to address the liquidity constraints faced by suppliers of government. Priority will be given to small and medium enterprises, cooperative societies, and contractors. Now, tax relief to businesses. Madam Speaker, in order to further address the short-term emergency liquidity requirements of businesses, boost their cash flows, and ensure business continuity, I propose the following tax relief measures, which I will in due course present to Parliament. One, defer payment of corporate income tax or presumptive tax for corporations and small, medium enterprises. I am deferring until September 2020 the payment of any corporate income tax and the presumptive tax due 1st April 2020 to 30 June 2020. Business people, I hope they should be clapped for this. Because I know there are some businessmen even in Parliament. <laughs> for tax compliant businesses, that is for tax compliant businesses with a turnover of less than 500 million per annum. Further, more, no interest or penalties will accumulate on these amounts during this period. 
This is aimed to benefit companies and small and medium enterprises, especially in tourism, manufacturing, horticulture, and floriculture. The number of taxpayers, <coughs> the number of taxpayers benefiting from this measure, for whom corporate income tax is applicable, is 10,140, and the deferred tax is estimated to be shillings 12.5 billion which can be plowed back into the business. In addition, the number of taxpayers benefiting from the presumptive tax measures is 23,892, and the deferred tax is estimated to be 1.38 billion. All this money is made to remain in the hands of these business people so that they don't cry about cash flows. Two, defer payment of pay, pay as one by sectors affected. I'm deferring payment until September 2020 of pay due from the 1st of April 2020 to 30th June 2020 for tax compliant Uganda businesses facing hardships as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. No interest will accumulate on tax due during this period an estimated 65.35 billion due from, due from pay as you earn for manufacturing and tourism sector is being deferred, which means it's being kept with the ongoing businesses. For, for, for the culture sector, the expected pay as you earn deferral is estimated to be 234 billion shillings. Three, waive interest on tax areas. I'm waiving interest and penalties on tax arrears accumulated before the 1st of July 2020 to lessen the tax liability of businesses who voluntarily comply with their tax obligations. The expected tax relief as a result is going to be, is estimated to be 50 billion. Four, provide for tax deductibility of donations for the coronavirus purpose. And I want to use this opportunity to thank all of you, Ugandans, who have been able to contribute so generously, and even non-Ugandans, for the fight against this enemy called coronavirus. I am allowing the value of the donations of the private sector has made towards the coronavirus response. You can deduct that one from your income. Five, expedite payment of outstanding VAT refunds. The Uganda Revenue Authority will speed up payment of outstanding VAT refunds due to businesses accompanied by measures to limit fraud. An additional shillings, 120.53 billion, will be refunded. Financial sector stability. Madam Speaker, in order to ensure financial sector stability in support of the economy, I reiterate the, I reiterate the Bank of Uganda's pronouncements on measures being implemented to mitigate risks to overall economic growth and also ultimately support the financing of the businesses. One, providing for adequate capital buffers for supervising the financial institution to ensure effective operations by deferring payments of all the circulation dividends and bonus payments for at least 90 days, effective March 24th. 2020. This preserves the capital of a financial institution and is intended to support the real economy. Two, smoothening out volatility in the foreign exchange market arising from global financial markets. Three, providing exceptional liquidity assistance for a period of up to one year to, to supervise financial institutions that may need it. And four, waiving limitations on restructuring of credit facilities. Supervised financial institutions have been permitted to, re to restructure loans and provide loan repayment holidays to companies and individuals affected by the coronavirus pandemic. And lastly, encouraging the reduction of mobile money and other digital transaction fees that are chargeable by mobile network operators and the commercial banks in order to limit the use of cash and the customer visit to banks. Enhancement, economic, enhancement of economic infrastructure. Madam Speaker, 
economic infrastructure covering roads, rail, water, irrigation, air transport remains key to economic recovery and boosting economic transformation. The intervention that will be implemented to enhance economic infrastructure include the following. One, undertaking emergency maintenance across the country of roads and bridges infrastructure following the destruction or caused by floods. You see what they went did here. In some rural areas, we know very well, in Bundibugio, in Kashese, in uh, up mountains, of, of, uh, no, no, in, 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 in Mbale, Ergon, pe people, uh, where? Butiaba. Eh, Butiaba. But no, Butiaba is not a flood. It's not washing the, the hills. I mean, I'm talking about the mountains that have been washed down. Economic, uh, economic, now, enhanced economic infrastructure. Madam Speaker, economic infrastructure covering roads, rails, uh, and boosting economic transport. The interventions that will be implemented to enhance economic infrastructure include the following. One, undertaking emergency maintenance across the country of roads and bridges infrastructure following the destruction caused by friends. General Katumba, the ball is in your court now. Two, the money is coming. The money will be there. From where? Yay. Are you despising the Republic of Uganda? We are not broke at all. We are not broke. Two, developing warehousing capacity at community, district, and regional hubs across the country to restoring supply chains and promote exports. Now, anyway, I will be coming to date later. I, I, I want to, to say something. I will come to later today. Three, exp expand expediting construction of private industrial parks and special, special economic zones. Four, rehabilitation of meter gauge railway, improving water transport safety by installing navigation aids and the development of air cargo infrastructure including the completion of the new cargo facility at Entebbe International Airport. And five, expanding feeder and national road network, net network, power and information communication technology infrastructure. Now I turn to improving peace, security, and good governance. Madam Speaker, government will continue to improve peace and security, the rule of law and good governance. As we have done before, Good governance will be enhanced to provide the necessary conducive environment to facilitate all aspects of societal development. The specific measures to ad will address, one, the promotion of peace and security at the community and national level. Two, enhancing effectiveness in public service delivery. And three, including increasing access to justice. Peace and security, Madam Speaker. In order to promote peace and the security of persons and property at the community level, we will implement the following measures. One, intensify community vigilance by strengthening the local council system, promote community policing in coordination with the local defense units. Now, Madam Speaker, the reason why one of the big reasons why this disease has not spread in the rural areas, the single most significant reason is vigilance by the councils and even the Wananchi. In at least I can speak for my constituents. No person can go there and stay there for a night without the chairman LC1 knowing. And he will question him or question her where he is or she is coming from. And if he's coming from a suspicious area, that person will be taken by the chairman to the, the nearest health center for safe custody. Complete the rollout of the, city, of the Safe City CTV project in Ujinja, Rugazi. Kayunga Anjeru, Guru, and Masaka, and ensure its effective utilization in, in, in monitoring crime and responding to distress calls. Three, 
improve border, border control through phased implementation of border point at automation in order to control illegal entry, improve your prior compliance with immigration laws and regulations, and ensure national security. I think yesterday you saw we are accompanying our neighbors back home because of this vigilance. Four, four strengthen the capacity of internal security. And five, fast track implementation of the convict transitional policy to integrate former convicts back into their communities. Madam Speaker and colleagues, in order to ensure the defense of the country, government will further strengthen the capacity of Uganda people's defense forces and enhance the effectiveness of the intelligence apparatus. Now access to justice. Madam Speaker, to improve access to justice, the following intervention will be undertaken. One, construct an additional five one-stop justice law and other service centers across the country. Two, implement the electronic case management system in the judiciary to increase efficiency in case of management. Three, the concentrate services for government analytical laboratories and business registration services to regional centers in Arua, Fort Porto, Guru, Mbale, Mbarara, and Moroto. Four, build the capacity of local council courts in the education in order to decongest courts of petty cases and increase access to justice. To date, 38,000 local council courts officials have been already trained and a further 78,000 are targeted for training in this coming financial year. And lastly, eliminate case backlog by implementing the case backlog reduction strategy, including the use of non-custodial sentences, including community service to reduce demand for pollution. Madam Speaker, Parliament recently enacted into law the administration of the Judiciary Bill 2018, which comprehensively provides for the functioning, operation, and administration in the, of, or, and administrative independence of the judiciary. Construction of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal has commenced and will eventually address the housing of these important appellant courts of law. I was there recently to inspect it. We therefore look forward for enhanced performance in the judiciary. Public service delivery. Madam Speaker, to achieve better public service delivery, the following actions will be undertaken. One, integrate systems and implement one-stop service Uganda center, sorry, integrate systems and implement one-stop service centers to allow the public to access related services in a single location. The service Uganda centers will be rolled out to 18 zone offices across this country. Two, develop the public investment management system policy to strengthen sector coordination in project identification, preparation, implementation, ex post evaluation, define roles and responsibilities of project stakeholders, and enhance project management and institute a culture of maintenance of public assets. Three, implement e government procurement across all ministries departments, agencies, and local government, and monitor government contracts and procurement in partnership with, with, with non-state actors in order to improve efficiency, eliminate corruption in procurement, and reduce, reduce, reduce cost of doing business. Four, enhance teleconferencing facilities in the government to limit person-to-person -person contacts in addition to reducing on co operational costs in terms of travel expenses. Five, fully implement the Leadership Code Act, including the operationalization of the Leadership Code Tribunal to ensure that the Leadership Code of Conduct is effectively enforced among all leaders and public officers. Madam Speaker, in order to address the challenges of corruption, the following measures will be undertaken. One, enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of oversight and anti-corruption institutions in identifying areas of risk. Two, strengthening implementation and the follow-up of audit recommendations. Three, strengthen implementation of public finance management rules and regulations and the role of internal audit. 
Four, enhance capacity of the Financial Intelligence Authority and related security agencies to, ident to intensify surveillance and gather vital information to, go to curb anti-money laundering and terrorism financing. Now I turn to financing framework. Madam Speaker, government is developing an integrated financial strategy to guide and monitor how we appropriately raise domestic revenue and both domestic and external debt financing over the NDP3 period. This strategy lays out how government shall appropriately raise financing to meet its development goals in both the short and the medium term. It will also ensure that government only borrows at most favorable financing terms for projects that will provide a social economic growth dividend. Madam Speaker, with respect to financing framework that underpins economic stimulus and the growth strategy I have elaborated, it is, especially, it is specifically balancing the need to restore economic activity on one hand while raising adequate revenues to finance government expenditure. The sources for funding include domestic revenue and public debt financing. Now, domestic revenue. Madam Speaker, domestic revenue measures for next financial year are anchored on the domestic revenue mobilization strategy, which aims to mobilize the sufficient revenue to support infrastructure development and social welfare. The strategy balances competing challenges of increasing the revenue effort to support expenditure reads, while at the same time facilitating investment and industrialization. The strategy seeks to enhance revenue collection to finance the largest part of our budget in the short, medium, and long term, and to create a tax system that is fair and transparent. I will repeat this. The strategy seeks to enhance revenue collection to finance the larger part of our budget in the short, medium, and long term, and to create a tax system that is fair and transparent. Madam Speaker, in view of the recent emergencies we have faced, government introduced modest adjustment in some taxes to raise revenue. This will support and enhance economic recovery as well as maintain an acceptable level of social welfare. Tax administration will be strengthened to improve efficiency in revenue collection. The capacity of local government, including the rollout of the digital collection of fees and rates, will also be enhanced to improve local revenue generation. My appeal to my fellow Ugandans, let us all pay our taxes, particularly the business community. Paying taxes is a noble, is a noble, a noble duty. We need your taxes, particularly, please, I'm addressing this to the business community, in order to facilitate you make better business. You need roads, you need water, you need electricity, you need the railway, you need the airport, you need good lives of the people who have been consuming your products or services. Please, the us pay our taxes without coercion. I thought I should illustrate this point. Uh, Madam Speaker, next financial year revenue target is 21,110 uh, billion or 21.8 trillion comprised of tax revenue amounting to Uganda shillings 20,219 billion and non-tax revenue of 1,591 billion. This target translates into a revenue show effort of 14.3% of GDP. To achieve this target, we will implement the following new interventions. Further rollout, use of digital tax stamps, and expand the range of products covered in order to deter under declaration of production and importation. I know my friends in manufacturing, some of you are unhappy about this system, but as I've just said, it will help you to know what you are doing, and it will help us so that we know what you are doing. Don't worry, we are not coming to rob you. Digital stamps also ensure that goods on the market meet the required health and safety standards. Two, widen the scope of income tax withholding agents across all sectors in order to broaden the tax base. Three, enhance rental income tax collection and compliance 
by implementing a digital collection solution as well as gazette rental income tax chargeable in different geographic areas for taxpayers who do not voluntarily declare their rent, their rent income. Please declare voluntarily your rental income. Four, gazette VAT withholding agents with the applicable VAT rates of 6% and provide for penalties for failure to withhold. Five, I don't want to, 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 I don't want to go to penalties, no. I want you to do it voluntarily and with a smile, with a like, so that the country can go ahead. Roll out the use of electronic fiscal devices, which are cash registers in interconnected to the Uganda Revenue Authority to improve record keeping and tax compliance. Madam Speaker, the modest adjustment to tax rates that have been made include the excise duty rate on fuel and adjustments to improve competitiveness in the region, support compliance, remo uh, compliance remove ambiguities in the registrations, as well as close loopholes that may lead to revenue leakage. In order to promote import substitution and the development of local industries, we have increased import duties on goods that are produced or can be produced locally. To Im the import duty on agricultural products has been increased to 60% and other products to 35%. Hitherto, we have been importing refined industrial sugar, yet we are a surplus producer of sugar. We have agreed with the sugar manufacturers to produce refined industrial sugar locally and we shall protect them from imports. Madam Speaker, in order to support agriculture, VAT on supply of agricultural equipment will be exempted. The supply of processed milk will also be VAT, VAT exempt to enhance the price competitiveness of milk produced in Uganda. In order to respond effectively to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic, taxes on supplies for diagnostic, prevention, treatment, and management of epidemics, pandemics, and health hazards will be exempted from custom duties. Public date financing now. Those of you who are worried about the date. Madam Speaker, the total date as at December 2019 amounted to United dollars 13.3 billion, with the external date accounting for United States dollars 8.59 billion, or 64%, while domestic date amounted to United States dollars 4.74 billion, all 35.6% of total date stock. Madam Speaker, government's approach to public date financing is elaborated in the medium-term date strategy for the five-year period commencing next financial year. We shall make available that strategy, and it is on the website anyway. If you check on the website, it is there. The strategy seeks to contract only affordable external date in preference, in preference to domestic date. The approach to reduce domestic date is pre in preference to external date is intended to lower the cost of interest payment to 2.2% of GDP compared to 2.6% of DGP if we continue borrowing significantly from domestic, domestic resources. Madam Speaker, to ensure that public debt remains sustainable, we will implement the domestic revenue mobilization strategy to increase government's capacity to finance programs, and I've said that one already, with less reliance on domestic and external borrowing. I hate borrowing. I don't want to do it, but I'm forced to do it because the revenue that I'm collecting is not sufficient to enable me to cover all the demands Uganda has put on the Ministry of Finance. This day, the economy minister for borrowing. In response to coronavirus crisis, government has commenced negotiation with some creditors for debt relief. This will free resources to finance interventions in the fight against the pandemic. Resource envelope and allocation for financial year 2021. Madam Speaker, the resource envelope for financial year uh, 2021 totals to 45,000. 
493.7 billion, of which domestic resource amount to 25,535.6 billion. Domestic financing amounts to 3,560.3 billion, while external financing costs it consists of project support of 9,515.3 billion. And the general budget support is 2,906.7 billion. Do, uh, domestic financing amounts to shillings 7,486.1 billion, and appropriation in aid is 215.6 billion. Madam Speaker. Total expenditure amounts to shillings 37,792 37, billion, of which the current expenditure is 19,787.8 billion, and the development expenditure is 18,004.2 billion. Sector allocations can be found in the budget as approved by Parliament. In conclusion, Madam, Uganda economic outlook is positive. Mm, I can repeat the other thing, you remember? Yeah, I can repeat it. The coronavirus pandemic has helped us to once again demonstrate the economic capacity and the vast opportunity that our country has. The budget for financial year we are talking about we will support the economy to fully recover, harness the potential that, have, or that we have, and get back to our progressive journey of double-digit GDP growth rate. I will repeat. The budget for financial, this financial we are talking about, 2021, will support the economy to fully recover, harness the potential that we have, and get back our progressive journey to double-digit GDP growth rate. The focus of the budget for next financial plays Yes, we thank you so much for watching UBC TV. We are still bringing you live uh, the budget reading of the financial year 2020-2021. That is the Honorable Matia Kasaija, Minister for Finance and Economic Development in the Government of Uganda, giving us the budget speech of this financial year. Jagenda, what is your making of the budget speech so far? Well, well um, I think the Honorable Minister there has uh, uh, virtually said it all, what is in the budget today, and um, uh, the, the signal has just um, uh, uh, cut when he's about to conclude, Exactly. and uh, he, he's taken it through, uh, and look at a number of things. Um, uh, there are certain things I'm very sure that um, uh, to, towards the completion of this thing, mm -hmm. uh, they tried to um, alter a few things uh, to manage and to suit um, the uh, pandemic that uh, we're grappling with now. Okay. Mm. Now, he says that the budget he is reading mm. has been packaged in a way that it will manage to support the economy to recover from the coronavirus pandemic and all the challenges that came with it. Mm. Have you seen elements in it that really point at this? UDB, UDC are one of those, and um, he actually says they need to put more money into that. Uh, you, you heard the president talk about, uh, during the set of national address, talk about one trillion into a UDB. Mm -hmm. and of course, that money couldn't come in one batch, uh, but um, the goal is one trillion uh, Uganda shillings, and uh, he's just talking about that there, and uh, seeing how much money uh, they are putting into a UDC, um, and of course, uh, UDB uh, for the private sector to go and get it there. So, uh, this has actually come on to uh, salvage or to do that, because remember that the process 
process started in September last year, and uh, Corona wasn't with us. Corona wasn't with anybody. There was no Corona in the world anywhere. Mm. Um, uh, corona, we, we start feeling that we start hearing the feelers of Corona um, as, um, in January actually when it was already uh, declared a COVID-19 pandemic um, on the 31st of December uh, by uh, WHO just right there. So uh, by the time we completed the process in uh, May of passing the budget that he is actually reading, um, but by the time we approved it, uh, we were already um, uh, in a lockdown. So it comes at this period. So they had to look at a few things. Uh, we had just, I couldn't go through the entire process, mm -hmm. but of course they had to uh, look at a few things and twitch in there. Uh, you also need to be very mindful that um, uh, the Honorable here, uh, Lugolo, we talked about our fiscal responsibility, the chart of our fiscal responsibility, um, which of course guides us um, into... Now, now we go to this when we uh, decided that um, East Africa should have a common uh, mon monetary um, union uh, just right there, which I think was launched in sometime in 2014 here in Kampala. So, so uh, but looking at that, be because this is not business that concerns only Ugandans, so, so, so uh, just managing our fiscal responsibility is one of those. But you see, when you read the uh, Public Finance Management Act that um, um, uh, tells us or that shows us how to manage our finances, um, it also has clauses in there that we can deviate actually uh, from the uh, fiscal, the chart of the fiscal responsibility. If we have natural disasters, if they break out, if we have unforeseen circumstances, uh, which is now COVID, mm -hmm. or if we have um, those other um, anticipated, unanticipated um, uh, severe circumstances, that may happen or, or, or come by. So, um, looking at what uh, the money is talking about is um, you just talk about the exemptions uh, that uh, with agriculture. So, so we, we've noticed that uh, Corona can be in the world forever, but that will not take our agriculture. Another one, mm. uh, they are going to tax all commodities that are imported, mm. but can be produced locally here. Mm. How do you look at that? Import substitution, I think that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've actually seen that because uh, before the uh, pandemic broke out, none of us thought that uh, we could actually make masks. We now talk about uh, making our own masks today. Uh, when the president was speaking to us a while ago, last week actually to be exact, uh, we did not have a single factory that was actually producing masks. How ready is government to support local production mm -hmm. that will give us products that match mm -hmm. The substitution we are taking on. Yeah, you see, we, we, uh, import substitution is very important because there are so many things that we get into Uganda that we can actually do in Uganda. Those that we can actually do in Uganda. Uh, and, and that's why they are recapitalizing UDB. Uh, they are uh, putting money in UDC uh, to see how to do that. And uh, that's why uh, the issue of value addition needs to be enhanced. We need to talk about that and we need to push or, or, or first of all that. What we need to do is, is what are these things that we are getting elsewhere mm. uh, that we can actually produce uh, locally here in uh, Uganda. Okay. Uh, the uh, Honorable Matia Kasaija's signal is back and let's take you back to Parliament as he moves towards the conclusion of the whole budget speech. Has been his delegate here and he has performed delegated function but the ultimate responsibility for this budget lies with the President and he will be invited to make his remarks However, before uh, I invite him, I want to uh, remind members that on the 2nd of June 
Honourable members, you will recall that on 2nd June 2020, the House amended the rules of procedure to provide for a virtual parliament. The House, amongst others, was expanded beyond the physical presence of members in the Chamber of Parliament to include virtual presence via designated digital platform. Consequently, by the powers vested in the Speaker, under Rule 8.1 of the Rules of Procedure, I have designated a virtual Chair of State for the President in the House for purposes of delivering to Parliament an address on the national budget for the financial year 2021 as provided for under Article 1012 of our Constitution. I also wish to remind the honourable members that as per Rule 236A of our Rules of Procedure, all parliamentary processes online and members who are actually present in the House will be treated under the Rules of Procedure. Therefore, in accordance with Rule 10 of our Rules of Procedure, the House shall be called to order and stand in silence when the President enters or leaves the House. The President shall be heard in silence. The address of the President shall not be followed by any comment or question, and there he will not also participate in the proceedings of the House in any way. So I now invite His Excellency the President to make his remarks about the budget. Your Excellency. <coughs> Excellence, the, the Vice President, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, His Lordship the Chief Justice, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament, the, the Leader of the Opposition, members of the diplomatic corps, and all the invited guests, and the Ugandans who are listening. First of all, I want to extend condolences to the people of Burundi on the death of His Excellency Pierre Nkuruziza. Secondly, I want to extend condolences to Ugandans on the death of uh, Ambassador Apar and, and Major General Kasiri Gwanga. May, the, may their souls rest in eternal peace. I want to thank the Minister of uh, Finance for presenting the budget. You all heard what he had to say. However, before I talk about the budget, about the budget, I must repeat the most important point of the moment, and that is the proverbs I told the people the other day. The the Rinyankore one. Well, first of all, the Luganda one. Nanta Wurirwa, the Savarana Wabumba. Somebody who could not be advised was told that, please, you cannot make a boat out of clay. If you want to make a boat, use wood. And you don't only use wood, you use wood of a certain type. But he could not listen. He said he could make a, a boat out of clay. So he went in the lake and he drowned there. Nanta Burirwa, Yasavara Nabwa Bumba. The other proverb says, Umzira, Ateke Engera. A brave man who is not careful only wins one battle because after that he's killed. 
there's no other battle to uh, to win. Umzira take ngera, awangula rumu. Those are Uganda proverbs. Then there is the Nyankwele one, which says, Amagara, Pechira Magana, which means life is more important than wealth. All these are proverbs of your people. So, some days ago I was getting worried because I saw people in Kampala moving around carelessly, moving in big groups, talking, shouting, no masks. Then the other day on Heroes Day, I really told you what I thought, that if you are disappointed that we don't have enough dead bodies like the other countries, you will get them if you don't listen. You find that we shall have teams of people putting on white, burying people like we have seen in other countries. Those groups are also there. They are arranged to, to bury people quickly because nobody can touch them. If you die from corona, nobody will touch you except the, the ones putting you on those protective uh, cover. So please, we cannot go on begging people to leave. This is not uh, how we run a country. Mature people, we tell you that, that, that this is a danger. You have seen people dying in other parts of the world. And we go on, police, what, what is the police for? It should be not police to enforce this. It should be yourselves. I'm very happy with the LOCs. The LOCs in the villages are enforcing that, as the Honorable Minister said. But all of, all of us should, do, should do, uh, enforce this on ourselves without having to bother the police to what? We, we have just told you, number one, don't get near me. Social distance. Number two, masks. The government masks, I think they started yesterday distributing them. The, the, the acting prime minister uh, started, launched the program, and they will be distributed to, to everybody. So number two, put on the masks. Number three, clean the surfaces like this one here where, where we are speaking. Clean them with the disinfectants. Number four, don't touch yourself in the eyes in the nose, in the mouth, with unwashed hands. And because of that, actually we, we are bringing it down, we, 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 are, we, we, are, we are winning this war, if only people could listen. The, The total figure of the people who are positive in Uganda up to yesterday, 10th of June, is 679. All. But these 679 include some people whom one of the laboratories classified as positive when they were not. There were, there were some people who were classified as positive when they were not by the laboratory at Makerere because there was some carelessness. They, they had very few people only three, only three people working there. 
and uh, I think they got tired and they started not cleaning. I don't know what they do, but not doing things properly. And some samples, which the Minister of Health should clarify, maybe tomorrow or the day after, we are classified as uh, positive when they were not. But it was quickly discovered, and uh, fresh tests were done, and the facts came out. So this. This, I don't know whether this 679 includes those or not, but the Minister of Finance will clarify. The Minister of, of, of Health will clarify. So these 679 are all. This is after we have tested 143,000 people. So we are winning this war against this virus. And I was at looking at the figures of the last few days, like for instance, the, from the population. Uh, on 8th June, we had only six who were positive out of 918 who were tested. On 9th June, we had only four out of 1,384. Yesterday on the 10th, we had eight out of 1,053. Now, that is the population. But even on the side of the drivers, like on 5th June, we had zero. The drivers, Ugandan drivers who are coming back, on June 6th, we had seven. On June seventh, uh, we had um, five. On June eighth, we had five. On June ninth, we had four. Yesterday, we had six. So we are really winning this war. If everybody listens, because the drivers, uh, the drivers at one time, uh, on for instance, on May thirtieth. There were 49 who proved positive. Then there was another day when there were 20. Then earlier on 28th, there was a day when there were 22. Then on May 26th, there were 23. But because these had gathered at the border in South Sudan, South Sudan they had piled there. When I spoke to His Excellency the President, Salva Kiir, he opened for them. They came, they were big because they, they had been piling there. But as you can see, the numbers are reducing now. So please, let's be serious and ensure that we defeat this small enemy. Small, but very dangerous. Yesterday when we were having uh, Heroes Day here, Haji Sedunga of the Veterans Association spoke very well in the, our local language in Uganda. He said, Of what day, Tibulina Magulu, the virus has no legs, it doesn't move. It is moved by the people with legs. And who are the people with legs? It is ourselves. You are the one who is carrying the virus from here to there. And if you don't carry it, nobody will carry it. Or if you are, or if you are careful with yourself. But now, they are, the drivers seem to be being controlled. But within the population, like these six of, of the of eighth and the four of the ninth, and the, and, and the eight of, of yesterday, many of them are from two areas. The, the Elegu area, Amuru, and Rakai area. That's where the, the, the majority of the, the, these few who are, who, are, who are showing up are coming from. 
the Minister of, of Health should give more details uh, later, like tomorrow. Now, this means the locals are not doing what Honorable Kaseja talked about, about the vi vigilance by the by the ROCs. If they are vigilant, even this problem will be controlled. If anybody comes from the neighboring countries, please report him immediately, or from anywhere else. Report him immediately to the health people. They know what to do. Do not keep something which is dangerous to, 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 to all of you, but also to those individuals. The fact of the matter is that if, if they are identified and they come to the government uh, treatment centers, they get cured. We have lost nobody. Nobody has died up to now. Out of all these 679, nobody has died. And I think 117 have recovered, have been, di have been discharged. So, by hiding, you are committing two mistakes. First of all, you are going to infect more people. And secondly, you are going to die when you shouldn't die. Because when you come to the, to, 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 to the, to the treatment center, we shall treat you and you will be cured. It's a very big mistake and totally unnecessary. Now, on the issue of security in the region, Uganda is, is stable, and nobody can, nothing can disturb us here. And we have actually been building a lot of capacity. When some people made the mistake of thinking they could destabilize Uganda by crime and so on, they actually woke us up and we enhanced our big potential and uh, there's no way anybody can disturb our peace. In the region there are quite a lot of issues and we can help in the region. Anybody, any of the brothers who wants us to help we can help. We have the capacity, like we have done with with Somalia. We can help. So we are in touch. Uh, I would r r like to encourage regional leaders to to, to 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 if necessary get regional coordination, so that we have got total peace in our area. Now, the budget, as you heard the minister reading, emphasizes, yes, there has been a problem of this virus, and it has affected some sectors, sectors like tourism, we are knocked out. That's why you heard that the growth, instead of being 6%, uh, it's 3.1%. But however, for me, I'm not uh, pessimistic at all. Uh, I am actually very optimistic because now the ritual we had done has made us, has made us survive in spite of the total lockdown. Because things are no longer coming from abroad. The fellows who are used to Okshaka, the people who buy things from others, the lazy ones, the lazy people are the ones who okshaka. Okshaka in the villages is a very bad thing. A home which buys food from other people don't, don't grow their own food. They are despised in the, village, in the villages. So the, um, those who have been okshaka, all these little things, now they have been shut up. So we are here by ourselves. And we are standing. We are eating, electricity is running, water is running, hospitals are running, vehicles are moving. We are moving without the outside world. 
They lead to, from the outside. So I think the virus actually came to, to wake us up. Now, because of that, we are going to be very, very strict with import substitution. I'm very glad the minister is talking of putting a tax on imported things which we, we are making here or we can make here. Those will be taxed. So that we produce everything that we can produce here ourselves. Third, secondly, we are going to, 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 to promote export promotion. To export to, to export to other countries. And in all this, we are going to emphasize the, 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 the nine areas which you talked about which coincide with human needs. The human needs which will never go away. Even if there is a war, those human needs are there. And these human needs are food, clothing, shelter, house like this one. I'm sorry you had that problem of the rain. I could see how it was disturbing you, the rain. I'm very sorry. Medicine, security, infrastructure, education, health. The minister forgot to add the ninth, spirituality. We added that one also because we need to, the fear of, of, the, of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So these are the areas we are going to emphasize. Now, The minister pointed out to you that because of what we had focused on correctly in the past, things are moving, even with this virus. In paragraph 13 of his speech, page 8, he told you of the coffee, the amount of coffee we are exporting now. He told you that we are now exporting 7 million bags. In 1986, Uganda was exporting 2 million bags. We are now 7 million bags. And I have told you that we are aiming at 20 million. There is no reason why Vietnam should export 11 million bags and we are just at 2 million, 2 million. I don't know who can produce coffee more easily than ourselves in the world. Then he also quoted about the fish how the fish has increased in the lakes. But you remember in my State of the Nation, I was also talking of fish farming. Fish farming. So the fish catch, uh, catches which have increased in the water should also be added to the fish farming which we are going to promote. The experiment in Limoto there's a, a swamp called Limoto in uh, Parisa, very good experiment, where we, uh, people shifted from spoiling the swamp by growing uh, rice there, and instead they are now doing fish farming, and they are using only one acre at the edge of the swamp, but they are earning 70 million shillings, while they were earning only 7 million when they were spoiling 10 acres of the swamp with, 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 with rice. The Honorable Members, I had to talk to Right Honorable Speaker to, to take some of the Honorable Members to Limoto and see that uh, pilot study which we have done. It's very, very good. In paragraph 22, page 13, the Minister talked of the Chira vehicle and the Kayora vehicle. Here, this is what the NRM has been telling you. Apart from agriculture and minerals and forestry and services like tourism and so on, 
you must take advantage of the products of the brain. The brain is also a resource. A country like Japan has no minerals, has no agriculture, has no oil, but it has, it, is now, it has been the second richest country in the world until recently when China overtook it, and it's now number three. But the prosperity of Japan is based on the human resource, on the products of the brain, and the skills of the, of the, of the human hand the brain and the, and the skill. That's why we are all driving Japanese cars. These are not potatoes that they are grown. These are products which are produced by the human uh, intellect and human skill. So we are moving in that area. The Ugandans, our scientists and our entrepreneurs must move in, in, the, in, the, in the direction of the products of the brain and the products of the skill. In that paragraph, we were talking of, Kai of the Kiramot vehicle, and we were talking of uh, Kayora, but there are so many products by the scientists in the area of, uh, of crops and, 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 and uh, agro-processing, in the area of uh, ICT, in the area of medicine, Actually, uh, the other day I told you how our young people have found uh, one of the best medicines for malaria. We may find the one for corona. In fact, our people would have found it long ago if it was not for the laziness of our bureaucrats, the ones who don't listen, laziness and rebelliousness. I tell them they don't listen. Otherwise, our people would have found some of the antivi antiviral uh, treatments long ago. Paragraph 41, page 25, was talking about the emioga. Emioga, the one for the money for the, uh, the skills of the, of the youth. Uh, there's 256 billion there, but I, I would want to increase that money. I would want to increase that money. We need much more money there, because that's where many men of the youth are. Very happy with the paragraph 43, UDB, Uganda Development Bank, putting in 1,045 billion. That is one trillion, one, one point something trillion. That's very good. So the manufacturers, Ugandan manufacturers, go to the UDB and borrow money at low interest rates and make all these little things you are, you are importing. Some time ago I told you how Madame Nachove and my small group, we are going to solve for you the problem of leather. We shall no longer be kushaka, leather, no. All the leather will be, produced, will be processed here. So that those who want to make shoes, who want to make what, the, 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 the leather will be from here. So for import substitution and export promotion, the address is UDB. Go there. Paragraph 58. Uh, there, there is some issue which needs to be addressed. The tax collected. Uganda has got the lowest tax to GDP ratio. As you can see in that paragraph, it is only 14.3% of GDP as tax. African countries go up to 18, some up to 20. So what is the problem? The, some of them go up to the European countries go up to 40%. The ones who are giving you aid, who are giving us aid. There's been a lot of corruption in URA. That one I have cleaned. That one I have cleaned, as we shall clean some of the other places. Wherever there's corruption, we, we, shall, get, we shall get you. Like we cleaned the URA crowd 
whom we were begging, begging as if they are doing just a, a favor instead of working for their country. Those young people who are given a, a great opportunity to serve their country said they were doing other things. So we have dispersed them that you, you are a crowd. So this 14.3% is not. And that's why I would, I would like to appeal to Parliament. For instance, this bill which I return, the rentals, this is cheating. Somebody has got 40 houses and is going to pay rent. And they are all renting because he says, I am building new ones. I'm building new, new, new houses. So, I'm not saving any money. He's collecting money. He's building new houses. He's be <laughs> and when he builds them, he's, he, he gives them to different people. No, we are saying that, no, pay tax per house. If you b b build a house and you finish and you start renting it, don't mix it with, with another house. This is the argument. We shall come and, and argue it. Unfortunately, the caucus cannot meet so easily now. But we shall debate and see. That's where you have got very low tax collection, 14.3%. And because of that, you must borrow now. You must borrow. And when you borrow, you borrow money and you pay interest. I would like the minister to, when you are discussing, to, 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 to remind you of how much money we are paying on interest. Because when I spend my own money, I do, uh, it's my money. But when I, I spend borrowed money, I must pay back that money and also pay interest on it. If you are to see the amount of money for, for interest each year, it's a lot of money. The minister can tell you how much it is, the interest, the interest on borrowed money. So that we, are, we are wasting that money could be doing more work, but because you borrowed, you borrowed because you are, you, 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 you are shielding people who, who, who don't want to pay taxes. There is some collusion. Collusion. People don't want to pay taxes. They just hide. Yeah. There is a lot of corruption. We are going to expose it. That's why this, this figure, 14.3, is not what it should be. I'm glad the minister mentioned something about the distance learning. We are going to, we are discussing it more in the cabinet, and we shall tell you more. But this is a very good way of teaching from a distance, so that even if there are dangers like this one we have today, learning continues. But we shall tell you more about that. Now, the exemption on the diagnostics that they are imported, and uh, be careful there. The, the minister there needs to harmonize because in one paragraph, he was talking of import substitution and protecting all locally made products from competition from outside. Then in the, other, in the other one, he was talking of diagnostics and they will come in free. But what if our people are making them here? Our people are going to make diagnostics. They, are, they have already started. Even the medicine, <laughs> they are going to make it. So that again, I, I, we shall not accept. Anything we make here, medicine, machinery, then it will be taxed. We shall tax the competition from outside. Well, I'm glad the minister alerted the, the honorable members that when we looked at the budget, we found a lot of wastage. Hiring halls. People are dying from corona. We are talking of hiring halls for meetings. Why can't that money be saved? Entertainment. One of our research people joked and said, okay, if entertainment, if you are eating two, two, four samosas, why don't you eat one? And you save three. 
for uh, to, to, to be invested in uh, in production. So we are we are coming back. We are coming back to engage our our people to say please. Really, you you got the economy now can take off. Can take off. The uh, the, the minister gave figures about the industrial rate of growth and so on. Yeah, but this is, this is cumulative, because you know there was a time when people were not working, they were staying at home. But some of the sectors grew by 100%. If you take the sector of the sanitizers, at what percent did it grow? How about the, the sector of the protective equipment? How about the sectors which have grown phenomenally? But because there was a general shutdown, that's why the average was a bit lower for industry and for the other sectors. So I congratulate the minister, and I, I thank the uh, right honorable speaker. I thank everybody, and I wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Excellency, President for performing your constitutional obligation. Uh, and all members, thank you for your kind attention. Now, colleagues, as uh, you are aware, certain processes and formalities have to be completed at the beginning of every financial year. I draw the attention of the Minister of Finance, together with the Secretary of the Treasury, that in the compliance with Article 164 of the Constitution, and the Public Finance Management Act 2015, the Ministry is supposed to present to Parliament the names of all the accounting officers of the ministries, institutions, and departments of government for the financial 2020-2021. I also would like to remind the whips of the different parties to handle the deployment of members to the sessional committees. I would like to give notice to the members of the Business Committee that the Business Committee will convene on 18th June 2020 at 11 a.m. to consider the program of business for the first meeting of the fifth session of the 10th Parliament. On our members, in many ways, time is of essence, taking into account the possibility of election activities that will disrupt the flow of business in Parliament, especially in the first meeting of the fifth session, which normally runs from June to October. I uh, therefore adjourned the House to uh, 16th June 2020 at 1400 hours. Unfortunately, again, we are unable to have a traditional reception. I can just say thank you for coming. Then you know. So, House adjourned to. Uh, 16th of June, 
Thank you so much, Your Excellency, President Yorika Guta Museveni, uh, for to boost the capacity of our small-scale businessmen. That is a very good idea. That will empower business people and that will encourage and improve the livelihoods of our people. But uh, on other sectors like for health, we as a country, as Uganda, we are seeing the crisis in which we are in right now. But they are put something which is below, which is not really commensurate to our state now. Though they have given like six point something, but it is not adequate for health especially. For example, you are seeing what is happening. Health workers are complaining of PPEs, protective gears. Other health centers, threes and health center fours, are not having ad adequate protective gears. So the sector of health, we need to look into it as a country. Though they have improved with education, but health first. Health when yes, yes, health still has gaps. And when you have a healthy body, then you can also go to school when you're well. One would think, Honorable, that the ball, as if it's in the hands of you, members of parliament, you're the ones that pass this budget before we get to hear of it or even get to know about it. How does it pass through parliament with gaps where you people think that actually this and this would be the other way around? How do you allow it to pass as members of parliament? Because I'm sure many of you agree that actually health needs a lot. How did it pass in parliament with these gaps yeah thank you so much it's uh, it is us pa parliament who appropriate and we pass the budget though we do it like that but to some extent you find that when the sector brings their 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 budget they bring it the way they are but you find again there are other sectors which government can say they are more of what they are but personally we as members of parliament we knew that the sector of health must be a sector which should be taken care of. And especially, I have told you, in this crisis where we are now of COVID-19. Yes. So, this is how we are with the money which you think is little for health. Yeah. How do you think we are going to handle with the crisis and little money? How do you think we but should handle I, as a country? I, what way forward do you give? Okay, thank you very much. I know with the little which we have, but I'm hopeful that government will look for ways for us to recover for that money of the health ministry or for the health sector. We shall do something as a government and we shall make sure that the health sector will get money. Yes. Thank you so much, Honorable Rosalind. Yes, she's a honorable member of the, one of the districts in Karamoja and she says she's okay with other areas, but the allocation that was, has been given uh, to the health sector has gaps and she thinks is something has to be done but she has hope that maybe government uh, with time they'll have to look into it and uh, come up with another supplementary or something like that Jagenda Samakura, i'll get back to you when i get some other mp to talk to yeah, let but, us but, but, give but, but, our, but, but, our but, viewers but, another opportunity to listen to you yes thank you jordan the, the next pal the next member of parliament that you get to to actually interact with them um Talk to them about um, uh, uh, the reallocation that the, minister, that the Honorable Member told us here uh, over $5 trillion. When they get into uh, that review and the reallocation of $5 the trillion, you got a shillings, exactly. Uh, tell us what they would think uh, their okay. priorities would be because uh, this money was uh, appropriated before uh, the pandemic broke out here. Mm. Okay. When I get back to you, that's what I will have. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Michael Jordan Lukomwa. Um, just right there at Parliament. Um, of course, um, he's run out of here to get there, and uh, you've seen him uh, interacting with uh, a few members of Parliament, uh, which I think is very important uh, that um, um, he talks to them uh, there uh, and, and we hear about that. Um, uh, the member of Parliament there was happy about uh, the allocation that goes to UDB and says that will, of course, uh, help us uh, to uh, boost uh, the small, medium, and uh, uh, the, 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 mid, the, the small and medium um, enterprises uh, to see how they can actually um, again get back on their feet, uh, especially those that have uh, lost out businesses uh, during this pandemic. Jordan, back to you at Parliament. Yes, Jagenda, I have the Honorable Gilbert Olanya and we want to get his view about the budget that we have just listened to a few minutes ago. Honorable, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Welcome back from prison. A few days ago you were in. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, we were demonstrating mostly about Ileko border, 
things related to COVID-19 pandemic. Thank God you're now out. Okay, what is your view about the budget the Minister of Finance has just read to us? Uh, if you look at the budget, all in all, I think it's quite convincing. I am quite happy that uh, some there were tax waivers on the small-scale businesses, specifically during this particular lockdown. And really what made me not all that very happy you remember when the minister said that they allocated some money, about 150 plus billion, especially for the youth within Kampala. So why is it you are looking at only youth within Kampala? Youth are everywhere within the country. You remember during food distributions, it was given only to Kampala and Wakiso. This is not fair for the country. Exactly. No. And, and, and also another thing that is excellent made, made mention, that really touched me seriously, about the lab, lab, laboratory in Makerere giving other results being positive, yet those people are negative. So now we are asking ourselves, what is going to happen to those, ones, to those ones who are really positive, not negative, and right now they are taken and being mixed up with those ones who are positive in the hospitals. What will happen if they contract the coronavirus from the hospitals? What is going to happen to the families of those people? And also we request the Honourable Minister to come up very clearly with the number of those people. And the Makerere Laboratory should be cautioned seriously. Because as a country, we need to be very mindful about our life. All in all, I'm really so grateful and I pray that the government should now prioritise health department. Sometimes back the Minister promised risk allowance to all the medical personnel, especially those who are working in the district, in the border districts, like my district Amoro. Right now, the medical personnel have never received that risk allowance. So I pray the government should implement so that we fight COVID-19 pandemic effectively. Thank you so much, Honorable. Yes, Jagena Samakula, I also want to talk to the Honorable Maurice Chibalia here. He was my uh, guild president at Macquarie University in my first year. <laughs> honorable, come this side. Yes, Honorable, a very good afternoon. What is your view about the budget speech we have just listened to a few minutes ago? Yeah, the, my comment is, is simple and clear. I've always told the people that in mathematics we have arithmetic and algebra, where you add 1 plus 1 and get 2. There is an area where you add A plus B, you get A plus B. You get it. I wonder, uh, I'm not sure whether this budget is realistic. You see, much as we have an estimate, we must be realistic. If, uh, basing on the current environment, my brother, the budget estimate that we had financial 2019-2020, we didn't meet it, and we didn't have COVID, though we had it in the last quarter. Now, this one, we have begun with the COVID. Adding on the shortfall of last year, the budget estimate we have had this year is bigger than the one we had last year. Basing on the effect of COVID on the investment, the, the whole sector, every sector has been affected. You get it? by the pandemic. Much as the president has said that some areas have grown, sanitizers, the sanitizer industry, is it sustainable? How long will it take? Is it, how long shall we need sanitizers, really? Anyway, you get it. So we need to be realistic. I'm worried. I wanted us to draw a realistic budget so that when we have shortfalls, it can be realistic, and we, but my worry as a person who represents people that are based on agriculture, the people from Busoga, from Bugabula South, for us we don't have industry, we only have agriculture. Now the challenge we have, when we fail to realize the money, the area that will be affected most will be agriculture, the education. How? Agriculture, there have been tax waivers that have, brought, have been put up in agriculture. Uh, they have actually taken off taxes from agricultural equipment and things like that. How is the sector going to be affected on Several occasions I've been in parliament for four years. Every year we request for a supplementary. You have never seen a supplementary uh, concerning agriculture. But you will always say supplementary concerning defense, concerning what, concerning what. You get it. What does that mean? That when there is a shortfall in agriculture, it will be hard to come and ask for more money. When there is a shortfall in some sectors, they will come and ask for money public service we need to pay salaries this we need to pay this but you'll never say supplementary concerning agriculture what does that mean that in this time when we fail to realize the budget some sectors will be affected 
and they will tell us because we failed to realize what we had estimated we couldn't meet this we couldn't meet this we wanted to have a realistic budget where more money goes to these sectors that can't easily access supplementary Honorable, I have two things before I let you go yes. one it, it is you people that pass the budgets here how do these gaps that you disagree with go unseen and you get to notice them after the Minister of Finance has finished reading the budget here. The other day you heard the President saying we have no powers to, to alter what the, the Cabinet has sent to us. We are only supposed to debate. Did you hear the President stating? The President may say, but are you that? The Executive has powers. The Executive the other day said that the role of Parliament is to advise. Not to take a decision. So that's what you are. You also admit as part. I don't admit, but this is a collective responsibility. If you if you disagree, but the rest say we move like this, what do you do? Executive is part of parliament. Okay. This country. I'll leave that at that, Honorable. Now, we have information that there may be a review of this budget because, yes, by the time the COVID pandemic problems came in, the process of coming up with it had already started. They couldn't hold it. So there could be a review and some more money may be brought in or things like that and other adjustments. Have you heard about that in the first place? I've heard about it. The other day we had the PSST saying so. My request is because I'm equally waiting for the, that review. I requested the stakeholders like you, the third estate, the NGOs. We hear NGOs always complaining, saying this and the other. When it comes to the budget, you don't hear them making statements. We want people who are concerned with this country. Also, first blow that side. By the time we come here, people will know that the voices, because the voices of the masses, the voices of voters, the voices of Ugandans must be heard here. What adjustments would you propose if the review is tabled here in your house or tent or whatever? My adjustments are one the poor people are going to be more poor. What program do we have for the poor people? Two, the low-income earners have been more hit by this COVID than the, 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 the big ones. You have seen the big structures coming up. Hardwares have been working. They are working for the big people, not for the small ones. Small businesses are the ones that have been hit. The big supermarkets, the malls and so on are running. So I want the money that will come, the adjustment, to address the low-income earner, the poor people. I don't want the adjustment to come and help instead the bourgeoisie, the big ones, the tax exemptions. Can you had the laying off of people from work. The big ones, the executives, the, the executive directors, the managers have not been MPs. Laid. MPs. Well, the, the, the small ones have been laid off. Can we have a program that can address the small people who have suffered most? Can we, this time, can we have a, a, a review which is low people-centered, the disadvantaged, you get it. Otherwise, we shall bring a budget. You heard the president saying that he has addressed the, the, the corrupt people in revenue. Who are the people that have been addressed? The corrupt, the corrupt are being corrupt every day. Honorable, thank you so much. That is the Honorable Maurice Chibalia. He's the MP for Bugabula South in uh, Busoga subregion. He says he sees a lot of gaps that really need to be touched. And if there is a review like we had uh, with the chairperson of the National Budget Committee of Parliament, I beg your pardon, uh, he thinks a lot has to be really touched. Yes, I want to talk to more members of Parliament who will give us their views about how they have really uh, looked at this budget we have listened to today. Uh, a very good afternoon, Honorable. Yes, yes, we just want your comment about the budget you have heard or listened to a few minutes ago. Well, the budget uh, has been read, but it has many challenges. Yeah, because... Uh, Which ones have you cited? We are at COVID-19, sir. And COVID-19 means that this budget is about economic stimuli. Now, economic stimuli goes along on looking at the, the current challenges that affect the various sectors. What were the most hit during this COVID, which we are still on. Look at our smallholders farmers at the lower level. Look at uh, companies that have been running with the debts having supplied government. So when you talk of domestic areas that actually is almost crippling many companies that has not been paid to date is one of those. Now, now look at, in, in terms of liquidity, we, we, we seem not to be having 
good liquidity in the economy. But what we are happy about is that how do you begin a process that can be cascaded down? For me, one thing that I look at in this budget is all about the Uganda Development Bank loan, uh, uh, capitalization that went to the tune of one trillion is the beginning. Because when we were in a Arua Investment Forum, these were the issues we raised. That actually, if you like to resuscitate the economy of Uganda, concentrate on the pillar through Uganda Development Bank. And that was the time that uh, the MD of Uganda Development Bank told us that the minimum that would require development, Uganda Development Bank to get upright and begin to move to support uh, many in the economy would be one trillion. And I think it is coming to be true. The moment they mentioned it, yes. you're happy about that. Yes. But now, the issue is, the one trillion should not be shared by the sharks in town here, guy. No. This money must be cascaded at the regional level. What is the capacity of northern Uganda in terms of the, the, the infant industries that are coming, the small holders that are coming? Is there a way that we can resuscitate them and bring them up? How about in eastern Uganda, central Uganda? And then beyond that, we need to see that the domestic areas that has been mentioned is paid instantly. Honorable, I want to let you go home. Thank you. But there are two things. Yes. We have heard that there could be a review of this budget because it has been read Yes, the process had begun yeah. by the time COVID-19 came, but it had been affected and things like that. So there could be a review. What would be your suggestion in case of any review? No, I think, I think the review is about uh, scaling up the, the revenue. Because when we were in the discussion of this budget, it was noticed that actually in terms of rentals, there were so many things that were uh, you know, covered up. So the only thing to do is let everybody carry his cross those who are supposed to pay rent should pay rent. But I think these are matters that will be reviewed by the Budget Committee and uh, Committee of Finance. And then we see how we move forward. Thank you so much, Honorable. Yes, the Honorable Number, just a minute. Yes. Uh, a, a number of your colleagues are complaining. There are loopholes, there are gaps, there are what? This budget, by the time it's read by the Minister of Finance, you people have already passed it. How do you pass something and again come to complain after it had been passed? Let us start with there, from, the from there with you. The, the truth of the matter is that uh, this budget... Uh, aren't of, you people playing double standards no, on your no, vote? Not exhibiting double standards at all. The budget is of 2020-2021 is unique and peculiar in its own way. By the way, all the budget framework papers, all the work on this budget was concluded before... Uh, COVID-19. Eh? And now that uh, we, we, we were concluding the, even its approval at the time of uh, the effects of COVID-19, this budget therefore ought to be aligned. You know, COVID-19 has had serious implications on the economy and on the number of sectors. And therefore, I must salute and uh, applaud the minister and the president this time round for allowing that this budget be revisited so that those gaps that have been created by the effects of COVID-19 are addressed. Site one, before I let you go on. By, uh, yes, by the way, the sector of tourism is down almost to zero, although they say it is uh, crippled to 3%. Uh, 3 and when you come to health itself, you see health and agriculture should have been among the lion's share, but those that are taking lion's share, the sectors are three. This one, is the, the, the health and agriculture, which are actually crucial for the Manainchi, are not even among the first top three. The top three that have taken the land share include, I mean, security. Security has taken an, a budget allocation of 4.5. Huh? A whooping 4.5. When health is just at a paltry 2.7. That is where I have a challenge with you. Visit and uh, actually Parliament mm. is going to reconvene to review and align this budget even. It has not been aligned according to the national planning plan, by the way. I mean, it document plan. And so uh, the minister was actually spot on and uh, even the president to even mention and... Uh, so and, and to be you best to support the review. Oh, yes. Mm. Just, so you, you talk about the, the small misallocation for health. Yes. What else? What else is about the president's real economy versus vulnerable economy? <laughs> it's so much not addressed by this budget. And the truth of the matter is the president is also kidding to say and praise Uganda Development Bank that is, it has been allocated to one trillion, when in the actual fact the allocation in the budget on paper, on blueprint, is a hundred billion. 
100 billion, billion is a, a parental figure which cannot address the bailouts of uh, the informal sector, the private sector and other agencies. Thank you so much to the Honorable John Baptist Nambesha. He says those are his gaps. I want to talk to the Honorable um, Pasis Namugan, the State Minister for Lands, before we wind up. Yes, Honorable, you're most welcome. We are so glad to talk to you. How is your afternoon? Let's come a bit closer. Yes, we are talking to a, member of, a number of members of parliament, your colleagues, about the budget that you have just listened to. What is your view? Your colleagues are not happy with what has been given to health, and others are happy with the Uganda Development Bank, others, a number of things. Personally, as Pasis Namugans, your voters are watching. What is your view about the budget? I don't know why they are not happy. Maybe sometimes our colleagues don't read figures very well and master. Yes, what has been allocated to what? Because this budget, if you look at it critically, it has focused on a few areas, which is excellent the President has been emphasizing. That is the real economy. It has given attention, agriculture, attention, education, attention, health, attention to ICT, because you had the minister emphasizing that because we are going to increase our agricultural products in order to promote uh, export, to do prom export promotion, we shall need a lot of marketing. But given the world situation of coronavirus, we need to use technology and do digital marketing. You must have had the minister emphasizing that. So the area of education, for example, even when the money is not much as much as we would like to pay, but at least we have given it attention. We are, the, the government is going to increase the construction of uh, institutions of higher learning, which said, the minister said, you know, even education, which the minister said are much more needed in the, in the uh, rural areas, because as you are aware, many uh, school dropouts have been there, but because these uh, institutions of higher learning, these institutions of higher learning are so, are so far away from the people. It, it doesn't, uh, these children who are dropping out of school, they find it difficult to go. If so many schools are updated, some of them don't even have pit latrines, but because we have not been giving education the maximum attention as it deserves, we end up dropping money here and there. At the end of the day, we don't mean a lot. A member of parliament from your region, the Honorable Chibalia Morris, says he's not happy with what the way agriculture is being given resources because even the time he has been in parliament he has never had at least anything like uh, a supplementary budget for agriculture and things like that that the agriculturalists have been hit hard with the pandemic by the pandemic just like other sectors but they have not been given that attention as other sectors have been government has given money for the youth more money for the what agriculture is almost the same what is your view on i don't think it's the same remember the last finance year we raised the agriculture budget to the trillion something that had never happened and this time we have added on something so uh, my, my colleagues that's why i'm telling you that they don't read these figures properly to know that there is uh, what uh, some kind of uh, um, additional support in the area of agriculture, as the president is emphasizing real economy, there is no way the government cannot give agriculture attention. Even in the lockdown where we have been, we have survived because we are eating, and what is affecting the world is food mostly. Therefore, the area of agriculture is given the attention, and even we are going to look at it more and more because you've had that we are borrowing, I mean, we are putting more money for irrigation. But again, we are also even borrowing for, for irrigation. And all that is to support what? Agriculture. And agriculture sector can be supported in so many ways. Because even the roads that we are constructing, they, they, they are, yes, yes, from the gardens to the market centers and wherever. For my colleagues think that these other uh, sectors when we inject in money, they don't support the other sectors. But what they should know is that sectors support each other. They support each other. When you have a good road network, you're supporting agriculture. When you Basing have on the budget, have you're supporting Basing on the budget, the way you have seen it, what message do you have for the Ugandans watching you, especially your sector, the land sector, and your voter deep down have forgotten the constituency? The land sector. For us, as, uh, as we, are, we are focusing on the, the vision of 2040, 
is to ensure that the land ownership in Uganda is clear. And that's why we have a task of ensuring that by 2040, all of the land in Uganda must be titled with clear ownership, not double ownership of having people who are owning the uh, different types of the titles on the same piece of land. But I want to appeal to Ugandans that now that they have lowered the cost of money, government has injected over a trillion to UDB. I encourage Ugandans to go and borrow this money. You know, Ugandans take things for granted. Even when the government comes out and announces something, they don't go there. They have a negative attitude of thinking that uh, uh, maybe they are lying. This money has been injected into UDB. Because one of the things that have been affecting our people is the ex money, money, cost of money. Money which is so expensive that they end up doing business as if they are working for the banks. Now that the government has injected money in UDB, Uganda should go and borrow money. And the youth, please, form these groups and the circles, the money is there, and work for your country, also work for yourselves. Thank you so much, Honorable Passes. Thank you to UBC sure the best. for serving us. Thank you so much, and we most welcome. That is the Honorable Passes Namuganza. We want to talk to the Honorable State Minister uh, for Microfinance, and that is the Honorable Haruna Kasolo. Sir, good afternoon to you. How are you? How much money should we come for in your sector, basing on the budget we have just listened to in a, in a few minutes? Well, uh, Microfinance Support Center has been given uh, around $90 billion, but uh, the Mioga component is the uh, 200 something billion but the president is also uh, proposing that the bu that budget should be increased to uh, less uh, half a trillion because the majority of Ugandans that have mostly been hit uh, these are the, the the people who are into micro business the businesses the border borders the tax operators those people that have been locked uh, in their homes they are there, they have eaten their capital, their businesses have collapsed. So it is incumbent upon us as government to see, to cut exactly. Before that, Honorable, how have you performed as the microfinance ministry in the budget that we are phasing off? Well, well uh, uh, we have tried to mobilize people. First of all, to embrace saving. Because saving culture, people had the abandoned saving, saving. And you see, that's why people are, are, are now agitating for support from government for what? Because they had not saved. People were spending their money as they were getting it. So uh, I made sure that uh, I mobilized the entire country, all Ugandans, to form groups so that they, have, they can have access to cheap credit. You see, everyone who needs capital. Capital is the amount of money that is required by an individual to start a business. So once you don't save and you don't have the capacity to borrow, eh, then you have you, you can do nothing. You cannot start a business. Therefore, I did a lot. What I did what I could to ensure that at least all Ugandans are mobilized to form groups, to form village saving and loan associations right up from the the, the village level. A parish and the possible circle. So as the, a ministry, a, a how ready are you to take good use of what has been allocated to you uh, starting this 2021 financial year? Well, well uh, if it were not for, or for restrictions uh, for conducting meetings, uh, we would straight away uh, be, be, begin mobilizing people. Because I had already mobilized the entire country, save so for Western Legion. But we are going to devise means uh, of reaching out to people, maybe through uh, radio talk shows, so that we can now work with the local leadership, the RDCs and district uh, commercial officers, to see how they can mobilize our people, start groups, and uh, register them, so that we can give them a push as in a, in a form of uh, city capital. Because the, the Mioga money is not to, to, to be lent out to, to groups. Just a little bit. Can you enlighten the Mioga uh, uh, topic yes. or phenomena yes. to somebody watching? The, the, the Mioga is a Ichinyankore word. Uh, mean, mean, meaning people, yes, people who are into the same enterprise come together and form a group. That group formed is in Chinyankore called Omoga. Okay. okay? So, so the Muoga is now Englishized. <laughs> so, so to mean... Plural, 
people yeah people who have come together but are doing the same enterprise say for instance border borders they are doing the same enterprise of riding motorcycles facing people on border border uh, they come together to form a group that group is the omoga and i have money for every group for every moga in a district i'm supposed to mobilize people to form 17 circles those are the 17 categories the border borders the tax operators the journalists the uh tailor, tailors, the the carpenters the restaurant owners to, 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 to mention them so they are supposed to be 18 categories that are supposed to be mobilized so these are the people that his excellence the president is now yes and we are supposed to support them with seed capital because their businesses have collapsed they have even eaten their capital they don't they, they don't have capital they don't have the savings so we are and you see it is it is very it is very good yes it is very good because small businesses can easily collapse but can easily be revived because a, 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 a chapati maker whose business collapsed yesterday can be given money today and if, and in the evening is he has started recouping getting returns out of it Thank you so much, Honorable Haruna Kasolo, State Minister for Microfinance. We want to wind up with the Honorable Johnson Muyanja Senyonga, the Member of Parliament for Mukono Municipality, one of those Mukono towns, South. Mukono South, uh, with, an with an apology, Honorable, yes. and to the people of Mukono yes. Municipality. Yes, Honorable, yes. Uh, what would be the view of the people of Mukono through you about the, topic, the budget we have just listened to a few minutes ago? Definitely. If His Excellency the President, through his powers, as he has noted that there is connivance in many ministries where they come up with the issues which are not really concerning any Ugandan about conferences, seminars, hiring halls, if that money can be saved for a genuine purpose, if we can find a way of helping Ugandans to see that this money that is budgeted for industries and small scale industries can be put in proper cons it can easily be accessed because accessing it can involve a problem through Uganda Development Bank and if we can help this Nekorena uh, Jang your dual card people Ugandans can be paid up they don't need even to be given possible what they need now is how best can they access that money for Nyoga very fast without a lot of hindrance because when money came for use the youth got problems how you could go to the bank and all that and it ended up into other people's hands yes that's why even paying back has been a problem definitely I don't think the budget is good enough they have realize that they need to review the budget. Huh? In what areas would you suggest adjustments of the budget? If the review is not like we have had, Yes, let what them areas would you concentrate on industries, agriculture, and the recovery processes. Recovery processes. Because some industries, small scale industries, need very little money for recovery. Strictness should do be put on reducing collapse on it. Make sure that all revenue is collected and goes to the coffers of the government. Because now he, he knows all oh, this one, has said it himself. Much of the money has been collected and ending into people's pockets. Yes. But who is going to make fall up? Who can as collect? Parliament, as parliament, as members of parliament, how have you helped this country? How have you helped the president? to fight corruption. How are you helping really as members of parliament? Because by the time the president mentions it, it means you, the MPs, you also know it. We How are you helping really? I've been on UBC and several other radio and TV stations. Is that enough? That's what the law tells us. Eyes on, hands off. When you see, you report. We don't go beyond. That's the problem with the law. The law is very clear. As I let you go home, yes. Honorable, what do you think can be that one spot on kind of goal or touch 
that can eliminate corruption out of Uganda or at least reduce it? What do you think can be done? When all of us Ugandans come together to fight corruption, because now even His Excellency is fighting corruption in fear, because they are so, it's a big group, he's fear for votes. Time has come for everyone to condemn corruption. Not only to leave it to His Excellency the President, because he's also really in, controlled by the voters. Sometimes he may be coming out with a big force, but you find out, eh, Sanderson is there. And that area, I'm losing support. Okay, what message would you have for Ugandans as we wind up? In a sentence, Uganda what Ugandans, COVID is there to stay. How best can you work in such a situation? Can you follow the guidelines of the health ministry so that the lockdown can be left free and we continue working, getting our own money and do business? And we stay home, but stay safe. Thank you so much, Honorable. Jagenda, just one Honorable Member of Parliament for a comment, then I let you go home, Jagenda. I know you're waiting for me. Honorable, good evening. Good evening. What is your comment about the budget speech we have just listened to a few minutes ago? The, the budget speech is going to do a lot of changes in policies and adjustments. Yes, that, for example, in the issue of education, because of the pandemic, we may need to think of building more classrooms, putting mass city schools in different sub-counties so that we do congest these schools. But we also may need to recruit mass staff because now a, a teacher may not handle more than 20 students when you talk about uh, social distancing. But it also calls for the hygiene issues that every institution, every school must have a permanent source of water because we need to wash hands. The issue of agriculture as a backbone of the country, we must change the strategy now that we produce perishables which cannot last a day in the market. How are you so going must, to turn them into the other? We must now look for storage facilities. We must look for coolers, we must look for cold rooms, we must look for fridges, so that when the demand is low... Has the budget talked about all that? We have to... They, they, now they have to... They have to, re they have to, to replan, they have to replan the, the target. As a ministry, they must go back on the drawing board and see the, see the critical areas. Agriculture, you must look for new markets now. The markets of consumption are not enough. You must look at, value, at the, the markets that can add value. So the, the, the technical rights must go back and, and, and readjust the program for them. What area in the budget do you think was not touched the right way, like your dream or, or expectation would have been? Of course now uh, my, my, I'm concerned about agriculture. Even the president says he has lost tourism, he has lost ETC, and all hopes on the agriculture. But also this disease here, the issue of everything. You can see more challenging issues are coming up. We don't know when this issue is ending and we don't know where you are heading to. So uh, apart from agriculture, we need to do the adjustments as the health sector is also concerned. Yes. Thank you so much, Honorable. Jagenda, this MP is your friend and the people of Nakaseke may not be happy with you if he doesn't, they don't watch him on TV. Honorable, come near here. Even the Honorable Member of Parliament for Kilak mm. is very happy about the UDB and the money that has been allocated to it. Mm. We want to hear what the voice of Nakaseke has this time about the budget that has been passed. Yes, greeting to my brother Semakula. I heard you talking about him. Yes, Jagenda. Greetings to you and from the people of Nakaseke. Yes, the money may be, may be there, all may go there. But how many people can access it? You can even look at the, at the loopholes of accessing that. I mean, the, 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 what, the, the blockages that they put there to access that money may be so many. So they may put the money there, but accessing it becomes a problem. There are so many monies which have been put in different areas, like, for example, the youth library program. But you find that the majority of the youth, especially in my constituency in Akasek and the rest of Uganda, have not accessed that money. So we want a government that works the talk. We have put there the money, but you have to ensure that that money get it. That's where is the, the, well, every one of us would wonder where the problem is, and this is my view. Mm. By the time this budget is passed here in Parliament, exactly. actually by the time the minister reads it here, mm. to all of us countrywide, mm. you people have already passed it. Exactly. How do you pass a document mm. where you have disagreements? Mm. That is where we, many of us actually have a problem with you. Course, You're almost 400 and something. Yeah. How do you sit 400 of you and pass something where you have disagreements and actually you don't bring these arguments and yes. questions to but, the floor when but, the, but, during but, the process? But, but we always do have them, especially in our committees, where you don't sit, some of you. 
when we do have them as politicians sometimes we agree to disagree but we, we get to know that along the way maybe we shall find some solutions to such disagreements we may be having but you know when you're a politician and you're dealing with the with the society you have to find a way you find some so, some soft way how you can address such issues in a process you know budget is a process maybe along the way you can find somehow uh, some adjustments and then you put something that went wrong you put it right what is your expectation as we wind up because uh, we have had this budget at a time when the lockdown is just being lifted step by step the problems are still around what is your expectation and message to the Uganda of course my expectation now uh, is not so positive the poor are going to become poorer and the rich are becoming poor why because we don't walk the talk we may have a huge budget but when you look at the impact of that huge budget it can be very small Without thinking about agriculture, because we all profess that agriculture is the backbone of this economy. But when you look at the number in terms of prioritizing, it's almost become number last. So why can't we prioritize agriculture such that we can walk the talk? Because even if you ask the, the president, even as members of parliament, or the minister of finance who reads the budget, that what's the backbone of this economy, he will tell you agriculture, and then you ask him, how much have you put into agriculture? Then we start talking Chinese. So not until, when, not until we walk the talk, the rest will just be uh, more, more, more of talks, and then we leave it on the paper. Thank you so much, Honorable. My pleasure. Mm, that is the Honorable Luta Maguzi of Nakaseke South, and those are his personal views. Just as you have been following, there are over 400, but each one of them definitely looks at things differently. There are so many others who are happy with some areas, but still think some other areas would have been handled a different way. There are others who think agriculture has been handled the right way, probably health still has a gap. So that is how Michael the picture Jordan. at Parliament is. Michael Jordan. Yes, Jagen. Just, just before you get off the I camera. I can hear you, Jagen. Just before you get off the camera, um, a comrade here, mm. Lugu Mafavi, has um, actually got through to me uh, to re-emphasize mm. and say, um, talk to Jordan and tell him uh, the reallocation is uh, not because of the COVID pandemic, not because uh, there is a pandemic here, but these reallocations are normally done uh, to just um, to, to reallocate, actually to restructure the budget, to, to, to put it in place, to, to, to see uh, where money needs to go from uh, the, the consumables to development and a number of things. So, so it, it's basically like uh, somebody putting together their house uh, and know that um, here is where this fits, here is where the fridge fits, here is where the, that's the kind of reallocation and um, I think we'll find him someday to also give us more uh, highlights on that. Okay, I thank him so much. Only that it is the chairperson of the budget committee that told us mm. that there will be a review mm. and he expects some more adjustments and okay. reallocations. Okay. But generally, that's yeah. the picture at Parliament. Mm. We thank you so much. Back I, to you, Jagen. I want to thank you so much, Michael Jordan. Uh, thank you so much for the work that you've done there. Greetings to everybody and of course to my brother, Luta Maguzi, Semakola Paulson, Kasana and, and, and everybody. Um, we're good to go and uh, we thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us. Um, uh, well, that has been the discussion and of course we we'll wait to hear from uh, more other Ugandans reacting to the budget. We really want to appreciate you. Now, I am very sure that I'm one of Uganda's uh, supporters of tea and coffee. I personally, Yageda Semakula Zixoka, I'm one of Uganda's supporters of tea and coffee. And just because of that, well, I think I just now also need to sign out, go and grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee this evening. As uh, we also say, thank you so much for being part of the broadcast here. And we just want to assure you that uh, tomorrow as we lay to rest, uh, retired Major General uh, Waswa Kasirie Gwanga, UBC TV, will, of course, uh, bring you that scientific coverage uh, from uh, Busuju, where that uh, gallant son of Africa, gallant son of Uganda, is going to be a light trust. I thank you so much for choosing to be with us. We now transit back to our usual and normal uh, programming. My name is Jagen Nasemakula Zekusoka. Thanking you very much and wishing you a good night. Bye bye.